Okay, so it's time to do the frequency separation technique. And we have a smart object, so the one we have from camera, because we chose the option to have a smart object, um, and that includes the raw file inside that layer, which is convenient. However, for the frequency separation, we need two layers, one of which will be um, applied with a Gaussian blur. And although we can apply a filter on a smart object and that will become a smart filter, we don't need to do that because it's gonna make the, P the PSD heavier and uh, too heavy compared to what we actually need. There is no point using a smart filter for the frequency separation. So let's just convert that layer to a just, well, normal layer. Uh, still, I'm gonna save that one. So first I'm going to duplicate it. So it's Control J, that's the shortcut, All right? Control J and the one we have here is going to be save, save photo, saved, right? Not really inspired for the name of that layer, but yeah, just to save it. This one, however, is going to be converted to a regular layer. So it's not going to be a smart object anymore. It won't include the raw file anymore, but it's, it doesn't matter because we still have it in the saved photo one. So let's go to layer up there and then rasterize and then smart object. So, well, it tells you I'm gonna rasterize that layer. And it's no longer a smart object, as you can see. Now there is no longer the, the icon that shows it's a smart object. It's just a regular, normal, basic layer. Double click on the name to rename it, and this is going to be low frequency. Hit Control J again to duplicate it because we need two layers to do our recipe for the um, uh, frequency separation. And this one is going to be high frequency. And this one's going to be hidden for the time being. And I'm going to click on low frequency because on this one now, I have to apply a Gaussian blur. So the Gaussian blur can be found in the filter menu, I'm going to blur and then Gaussian blur. Um, we are a bit far away. So I'm going to zoom in using control plus. This is way too much, the radius of 42. Usually uh, for a Canon 6D or 5D Mark III, so around 20 to 25 megapixel, um, I like to be around 5 pixels. So you need to have like um, a smooth skin, that's what you want to see here, alright? Um, not too many details, not too smooth. Uh, it's very hard to tell you what will be the exact recipe, what will be the sweet spot, so you have to kind of experiment. Basically what it will be doing later, because at this point, if you have never done a frequency separation, you may ask me, well, how am I supposed to know the, the perfect value if I don't even know what it will be used for? Well, actually this layer will be used to get a, a smooth light across the face. It's like we're gonna blend the light. So when there is a highlight next to a shadow, this, these two will be blended together. So the light looks uniform. So you have kind of a, so, so if you have a harsh light somewhere, it's not going to be a harsh light anymore. It's going to be a really um, nice and progressive light spread across the surface. So that's why uh, you want to use low frequency. But out of the low frequency, we're going to extract some details. So this is where it gets tricky. If you take a value that is too small, you have a lot of details on the low frequency, but not um, not enough on the high frequency. So basically, the more you go on the right, the more you will be able to extract and put them in the high frequency layers. And you don't have to go to, you don't have to, if you go too, um, too on the right, too much on the right, if, you, if it's too much, basically part of the light will be put on the high frequency. So it's kind of a compromise to find. You need to, to be in between. And five pixel for a, uh, 25 megapixel camera is, to my taste, the um, the amount that is a sweet spot. That's what I've found in my uh, in my research uh, so far. So some people use around two or three. Some people use a bit more. But if you go too far on the right, that won't be good. Um, that's for sure. So let's say 4.5, and you kind of um, you can experiment if you want. Go back using the history if you want to go back and then click OK. Now you can find on the internet some actions like scripts that will do these operations for you. They will duplicate your layer, apply the Gaussian blur and apply what we're gonna do just next and create the separation just, um, just fine. However, 
it won't ask you most of the time what setting you will be uh, using in the Gaussian blur, which I think is a mistake because precisely the frequency separation technique will, um, relies a lot on this particular setting. If you miss it, if you miscalculate it, your frequency separation is not going to be good. So I don't, use the, I, don't, I don't use an action, I do it manually. It takes a few seconds, but I want to make sure I know what I'm doing, right? I have, I have a control on what I am doing and this is the way you want to work. At least it's the way I'm, I'm working. So 4.5, click OK. And now I can reactivate the high frequency. I'm gonna click on it. And we're gonna go to image and we're going to apply image. And this is what the recipe is going to do its magic. So we want the apply image to work with the low frequency. So we're telling Photoshop, take the low frequency and put it in the blending mode add. And what it's gonna do, when you click invert, what it's gonna do, it's gonna take all the details extracted from the low frequency layer and put everything else on a neutral gray. Then everything that is brighter than the neutral gray, well, obviously is gonna be in a light gray, almost white, and what's darker is gonna be um, in black. And once on top of the other layer, in a different blend mode, like linear light, which is the one um, you have to use, it's going to overlay the details on top of the light. And this is how you create a frequency separation. The low frequency, it's the light. It's basically what we have on the surface and underneath the surface of the skin. And the high frequency, which is usually the blue channel in the alpha channel, and the skin is on the red channel because of the blood reflecting, uh, is the high frequency. So we're gonna click OK. And if you stop right there, right here, well, it's, it's not very interesting, is it? So if you go to blend mode and switch to linear light, we kind of go back to square one. Um, it's exactly the same image as we had just before. So let me click here on saved photo with alt click. Just to show you now all the two other layers are hidden and we're only displaying the saved photo. I'll click again and this is with the frequency separation. So nothing has changed. However, we now have a layer with the light that we can work with and the layer on top of it, which is on a neutral gray, but in, in linear light, it overlays itself on top of the other and add the detail. If you zoom in, it's gonna be um, easier to, to get it. Now you can see the details are on top of the light. Now what you wanna do is get a smooth light across the face, right? So again, it's subjective, it's, it depends on your, on your taste. Uh, for this particular portrait, I want it to be dramatic, I want it to be intense, I don't want a skin that looks fake. Uh, I want to preserve some details. Right, so how to do that? Click on low frequency, click on the lasso tool on the left, okay, and it, the shortcut is actually L. Um, and go to feather, and again, the feather depends on the size of the photo. 20 pixels on a photo that is small, like, I don't know, 2K. It's not a lot on a photo that is 10K. Um, it's actually a lot on a small photo, and it's not a lot when it's a bigger photo. That makes a bit more sense. So this photo, Control alt i is, remember, 5K wide, so it's, it's, it's a pretty big image. And the feather needs to be increased to something like 30 pixels. Now, if I do a selection, quick selection, rough selection, not really interesting, and I press Q, I'm gonna have the quick mask, and that quick mask shows me the feather. Otherwise, I can't see the feather just with the uh, running ants, with the active selection. So it's a quick way to see what your feather looks like. And you want a feather because we're going to blur the low frequency, and so the light blend uh, across the surface. Example, here we have a shadow, right? It's not really pretty, it's kind of a spot, a black spot on, on her face. And here we have a highlight. Basically, we want the light to be um, spread uh, evenly on the surface. Of course, this uh, needs to be brighter than this because the light comes from the, li from the right side. So of course, this is going to be brighter than this, but the transition between the two zones 
it needs to be smooth, right? So let's say I take this part and I take a bit more, so I go a bit further on the right and I want this spot here to kind of disappear or actually blend with the rest of the light. Now, if I go to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur, well, 4.5 is clearly not enough, but I will exaggerate so you can see exactly what it does. Let me go to 30 pixel, and now I think you understand that the light beneath the high frequency is being smoothed, um, smoothed on the uh, on the surface. This is way too much, so we're gonna go to something like 10 pixels, maybe, or a bit, or a bit less, and we can do it several times. So let's just validate and click OK. Right, so now you can take different parts and reapply the Gaussian blur with Control Alt F. And again, for this photo, I'd like to have kind of a, a detailed skin and I want a dramatic look. So I will exaggerate for the purpose of this tutorial. So it looks, um, oh, I typed Control Windows F, which is not what I wanted. Control Alt F is better, that's it. So I will exaggerate so it looks, um, it's easier for you to look at because depending on what, what kind of screen, what kind of screen you're gonna use, maybe you won't see the details the way I see them right now. So I'm looking at a four screen monitor, so I have a lot of details. They all pop out of the picture. So for me, it looks really smooth. But then again, depending on the way you look at it, it may depend. So here I have this part where there is a shadow next to a highlight. And if I press Ctrl F several times, the light is going to be blended with the shadow. So we have now a smooth transition between the two. And I can do it on this part of the nose. So you, you always want to take a shadow next to a highlight and blend them together. Same for the nose and blend. And I usually do several Control Alt F. Then go back here. So it looks very smooth now. It's way too much but I will be able to show you a before and after so you can really understand what's going on with the frequency separation. And if you look at the, at the cover of this tutorial, like the way I did it, um, you, can see, you can see I didn't go that far. Okay, so let's zoom out because then again, so this is what we would do for a magazine. It's way too much. It's really, really, really smooth. Still, we have some details, right? If you look at the, if you look at the skin, the skin texture is still there. No problem. But the light is really smooth on the surface. Okay. If you compare, this is before and this is after, right? We still have skin texture, but the light has changed. Let's do this again here because we have that spot just below the eyes and all right now if we go to high frequency and if we want if we want to remove some detail actually on low frequency just bear with me one more second just there at that spot i want to blend that together yeah here we go all right and maybe a bit there Okay, so now on high frequency, we take the clone stamp and the clone stamp needs to be in current layer. You want to clone only from the gray, okay? You don't want to uh, blend the two together with um, current and below because it's going to make a mess. Look, if we take current and below because it's in linear light, it will increase um, the brightness because we take it from the two layers merged together when it's current and below. We clone what we see basically on the screen. What we want is to clone only from the current layer, which is the high frequency. So because we clone from the texture, we can actually 
we touch the texture of the skin, remove pimples, blemishes and imperfections without actually cloning the light. It's only the texture that is um, being applied and that's a very convenient way to retouch the skin. Look at this, I can clone from a darker part of the picture but it's only the texture that is being taken in my brush. So this is the frequency separation. You adjust the light, you get the light really smooth on the surface, but because the details are applied on top of that layer, you can later on, usually you do it straight after, but you can later on adjust the skin texture, removing some spots, blemishes, or whatever you want to remove by cloning and just working on the texture. So now the skin The skin has got a nice texture and a nice light. And this is what it looks like once it's, it's finished. It's way too much. It's probably too exaggerated. Okay, let's compare. This is before. That was a bit rough, especially with the, um, the kind of black and white we ended up with. But again, I wanted something um, really intense. And this is after. So you can adjust this. You don't have to go that far. You can adjust the amount of blur you apply in the first place and then the amount of blur you're putting on the low frequency and the lasso tool uh, just after. Okay, but the, uh, the different steps are the same. You duplicate your layers, one of which is going to be the low frequency with the Gaussian blur applied, one of which is going to be on top of the low frequency, it's going to be the high frequency. You go to image and apply image and select low frequency, blending add, invert and scale to, click OK and then put that layer into the linear light mode. And that way you will be able to retouch the light apart from the skin texture. Now you may say, well now that you, go, now that you, you went too far, how are you going to go back? I mean, are you going to start it over or is there a way to, to kind of um, trick it to to get back to what you wanted, which is something a bit a bit harsh, a bit rough, but not too much. Well, this is why we saved Save Photo in the first place. So I'm going to duplicate it, put it on top. Uh, we, again, we don't need, we don't really need um, a small object. So I'm going to click to layer and rasterize and small object and reactivate the frequency separation, which actually I'm going to put these two into a group. So select them and then control J and it's going to be FRECSEP for frequency separation and this one is going to be original. Right so now it's the original is 100% uh, on top of it so it's not really interesting is it? Um, I wanted to blend it a tiny bit so I can add a bit more details to something that is way too smooth right so if you exaggerated if you went too far it's not a problem actually there is um, they, it's part of the recipe to blend the original layer back uh, to the frequency separation so you can adjust what kind of imperfection from the original photo you want in your final result. So this has to be masked, obviously. So I'm going to click on the layer mask button, which is there in the layer panel all the way down, and click with Alt pressed. So now I have a layer mask and on the original. It's all black, meaning it is masking entirely the original file, so all the details disappeared again. I'm going to click on the, uh, the uh, paintbrush and take some white and lower down the opacity because if I click 100% I'm going to click and paint 100% of the details back on the, on the picture and I don't, I don't want that. So let's bring like around 50%, I have the, the pressure sensitivity activated on my Wacom tablet and I want the flow to be just about 100%. So now what I can do is reveal some details back on the picture where I want, obviously not everywhere, but just a tiny bit so it doesn't look that fake, it doesn't look that, that smooth, okay? So let's bring back some texture. And this is again very subjective, it's up to you to choose and to achieve the, um, the the look you want. I think this photo looks better if we have 
um, we, if we have some details back on the, on the skin. Right, so if I look at the mask, this is what I have. It's a bit rough, obviously, because we can see the brush strokes. But if I zoom in, as you can see, we can't see the brush strokes. And what we did is bringing back some of the imperfection we had originally. Okay, so it doesn't look too smooth. Now, if you think these brush strokes are a problem, well, it's, it's not a big deal. What you can do is select the layer mask, just what I, what I did right now, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and yeah, guess what? We're gonna blur the brush strokes. Okay. And click OK. And then I'll click again on the layer mask. And that's it. So this is the original photo, okay? This is the frequency separation technique. I think it's way too smooth. So I'm bringing back some details. And the quantity of details I'm bringing back is entirely up to you. It's very flexible because you can use the layer mask to paint where you want the details to be uh, revealed and how much you want them to be revealed using the opacity on the layer or the opacity on the on the brush because of course we can use the opacity of the of the of the layer itself right so it's a really 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 flexible way to reveal uh, details right so that's it for the frequency separation technique uh, we used it in a way that is a bit different than um, what you see in magazines like for beauty and and fashion usually you want a really smooth skin you want it to be flawless intact no imperfection whatsoever but for this particular portrait because i have um i have an intention and i want it to tell a story i want some details back and actually i would put a bit more back um, at the end of this video i will i will stop the video because it's not really interesting to see me painting but probably I will add a bit more details. Now, what we're gonna do after, uh, we're gonna work on finishing touches and that being bringing back some details on the hair using a relight layer in linear light mode with the neutral gray. So we can paint the light around the portrait because the background is not completely black and I want it to be completely black. And once we've done that in Photoshop, we're gonna go back to camera at the step where we had applied a skin retouching process and see if we can do exactly the same but using only camera okay so work on the hair fix the background but do that only in camera so you will be able to know how to do it in photoshop but also how to do it entirely in camera so let's go to the next video and see how we can do it in photoshop first <laughs>